Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to work on the color block tunic and this is very similar to the other uh, color block top that's out there but it's a tunic and this distance much down here is much larger than the other uh, color block top. So it's actually a very simplistic pattern. It's just double crocheting going back and forth. This is a really quite a beginner project. It sim uh, truly simply is and all we're just going to do is just extend ourselves into making a longer panel here and then just make it a little bit bigger. So if you can visualize this as a rectangle coming together you'll be laughing. So let's talk a little bit more about this pattern. So in this pattern we have multiple sizes all the way from extra small all the way to five extra large and you can see that there's color coded like so. So you can match things within today's pattern in order to make it work. So you can see that even for the Peyton's Grace and I use uh, Croy Sock Yarn for mine and what I did is that you can see the different color uh, variations. So if you want the night color which is the dark you can see it was seven balls of that and then natural is the four balls. So all together you see the ball counts just like here. So I as the sizes get bigger of course you're going to need more yarn in order to make this all work. So in the pattern what we're going to do is that you're going to have a breakdown of all the different sizes all in the color coding. So here's a great example and let's bring in the camera a little bit closer so you can see that here and the color coding is actually really quite simple. So what we have here is that we have the small, extra small here and these are in order of size. So you wanna only do the ones that are in the size that you're, you're working with. So if I'm doing extra small the whole time I wanna concentrate on this darker um, red, reddish number just like you see. So whenever there's a decision to be made you'll notice that it, it'll have that. So here in he this one here it says with B chain nine and da 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 you'll notice that there is no brackets in here. So that means that all sizes are identical in this particular row. So whenever there's a decision to be made you'll notice that there is always going to be something here to show you the, the stitch counts that you're gonna have to worry about in the future. So it's not a hard pattern in order to do. So what we do is that we stop at uh, start at the bottom so you'll see it's a rectangular just like you see here and then we work our way to the top. We change our color, make this top a different color and then we come and we do the tops here. So the only difference between this one here and the color block top is the amount of distance from here to here and it's pretty much simpler, uh, simplistic from that point. So without further ado let's grab our yarn and our crochet hook and let's begin. So let's begin today. You have to chain a certain amount of count that is going to match your project. So look at the pattern and get the size. So just gonna start with the slip knot and for the extra small size that I'll be working on I have to chain 84 because that's what it says. But again if you're doing another size just look at the pattern and do the amount of chains that matters. Now right now I'm just gonna show a very small sample of what you need to do. It's just simply double crochet all the way across. So you're gonna chain in the counts that you need to do. So for me I'm just gonna do a chain count of 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So go all the way to the chain count that you want and then meet me back here and I'll show you how to go back across. So to go back across from row number one you have to go to the fourth chain on the, from the hook. So just count back. So 1, 2, 3 and go to the fourth and I want you to double crochet in the back loop only of the chain and just double crochet there and moving across your entire chain just move to the next chain available to you and I want you just to double crochet into the back loop but once you do the first one the chain will stay, uh, stay in a turned up or upside down position in order for you to do that. So just one double crochet in each chain all the way across. So once you go all the way across you're just gonna turn your work and now you're just gonna go back and forth just doing the exact same thing until you get to a certain amount of inches. So let's uh, begin and show you how to do that. So you're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three and that counts as a double crochet and then you move to the next stitch to uh, next and then just double crochet. And you're just gonna double crochet in each stitch going all the way across. That's all there is to it. 
and so you're just gonna go all the way across and then turn your work and chain up three and double crochet all yourself all the way back and what I'll do next is that I'll talk to you about the size that you need to aim for and then what we'll do is that I'll show you how to do an increase with a different color and then we're going to then move on from that point and I actually have the sample made off off camera but I have it made all the way to the shoulder area where I can show you how to do the shoulders at the end of this project. So I'm just uh, basically getting you started because this is pretty much a very simple project even for beginners. So let's uh, continue along. So right now we're going to just go back and forth with just double crochets up until you get to the distance from the bottom edge all the way to the top to a certain amount. So depending on which size that you're working on you can see it by the color code it will either be 13, 13 and a half, 14, 14, 14 and a half or 15 and just continue to use this same color and get, get your measuring tape and just measure it off at the top. So it's actually quite an easy pattern to be able to work with and then what we're gonna do from that point is change our color just like you see in the top here and then we're gonna extend it out to make a little bit of a sleeve and then continue our way to the top. So continue now just double crocheting until you get to the size that's recommended on the pattern. So today I'm only doing a small sample with you so you want to finish off this, the height that you needed and you're going to finish it completely off and we're going to start on the top part of the top or the tunic. It's both the same at this particular point. So this is where I want to finish off and this is looking at it on the right side of the project. So I want to finish off uh, when we go to do that. Okay so this is just a really kind of an easy way in order for you to follow. So now what we're gonna do is join our next color on and both sizes are identical or both types of projects are identical to each other uh, from this point going forward and so it's just a matter of joining on some new yarn. So let me show you how to do that next. So let's begin the top part of your top or your tunic and you want to create a slip knot to begin and we're going to insert our hook in. So you'll notice that I didn't attach it to this project yet. So what we have to do here is that we have to create a foundation to get it wider out on both sides and in order to do that we have to start off with this section first. So we're gonna chain a total of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So now that you have your nine in here all you have to just do now is that you're going to double crochet starting in the first stitch going in the project itself. So pick up your, your um, block that you've been doing and I want you to double crochet then the next one in just like this. So now it'll look like it has the sleeves on it and then you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across your top or your tunic. I'm just gonna say top from going forward uh, in today's tutorial to make it uh, simpler to follow along and so you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across what you have already done. So the trick is is that when you get to the other side you're not completely done when you get to the final stitch you have to extend in order to get the sleeves to be on the other side as well. So let me keep uh, moving along over there and you're gonna think it's weird because we started off with chaining of nine to begin but remember that we're gonna be coming across that chain and it's just like you're starting a project so you have to create some extra chains in order to keep the balance. So you do your final stitch and then you're gonna chain a count of 11. Okay, so let's keep on going. So we're just gonna continue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven. So you have nine on this side, eleven on this one but watch what we're gonna do because the next row then is going to establish this then for the remainder until we get to the shoulders. So let's turn our work and let's move up to row number two. So this is the chain eleven side so we're just gonna come back down and we're gonna look at the fourth chain from the hook. So count it back. So one, two, three and four. Back loop only on the fourth chain and I want you to double crochet into that chain. Very good. So here we go and so now you're just gonna continue to uh, crochet across. So the trick is is that you should have nine double crochets that'll be here before you hit that main block area. So the trick is is to watch and count that because if you end up with ten or less what's gonna happen is that you'll have one sleeve bigger than the other and it will be noticeable in the end. So you don't want to uh, to rush this part in order to have the the balance be the mistake right at this particular point. So 
So you can see this is how we're establishing the block to be bigger as we move ourselves across. So let me just uh, take a quick count. So I got one, so I'm counting the posts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I had one more stitch left anyway. So this is nine. And now we continue across the project in every stitch with just double crochets. So now you can see that we've just made the block bigger in order to do the upper part of the top. So now I'm just gonna double crochet myself all the way back across. Now the other side we still have the chain left. So how many is left on the chain that you're gonna have to do? Well you have to do a total of nine in order to keep that balance. So make sure that you are paying attention to the count especially at this particular part of today's tutorial because it will matter in the end. So at this point I have not shown you my samples that I did. I did, I did two different uh, panels. Um, they have uh, different colors on the top so that you can have uh, ideas. Um, it's up to you on how you want to um, put the color up your particular project. So you're gonna come all the way to the final stitch that is here and then you have your chains left at the end. So continuing on the back uh, loop only and you wanna chain a total count of nine or sorry, a double crochet a total of nine. So I'm gonna count that out. So this is gonna be two and we got three, four, this is uh, gonna be five, and six, And then we got seven and eight and nine. So I have my nine in on this side. So let's just turn to work and just let, let's quickly review. So you can see you have the main panel right here and now these are the sleeves. Obviously this panel is gonna be bigger, much bigger here but now you're just gonna continue to go back and forth. Now you've established the panel to be bigger and now it's just straight double crochet back and forth ag again until you get a certain uh, size. So chain up three and just one double crochet in each stitch going all the way across. So let me I just go across here and then what I'm gonna do from this point forward is that we're gonna talk about the height and then I'm gonna bring back the samples that I have here off camera and actually finish the real deal here on camera. So I'll be right back in just a moment. So here we are back on the pattern and now we have to continue the top area just like you see here and as I promised the tunic and the top are both the same in this section of the pattern. So and that includes the neckline here. So you'll notice that it's uh, either 10 all the way to 12 inches, 10 to 12. So in the instructions it's going to tell you to measure a certain amount. So in the color block top like you see it's actually much smaller. So you're going to continue to go along until you get to a certain amount of inches when you go to do that. Okay and we'll talk about that in a second and again here we're going to uh, measure all the way from the bottom all the way to the section before we start doing the indentation then for the top. So it's actually really quite an easy pattern in order to be able to follow. So if you're working on this top you're going to notice that in the third row here we have to get to a certain amount of inches in order to do it. So this is actually looking at the back as we came around and this is the back of the project. So we measured uh, all the way from the top all the way to before we start the actual shoulders itself will be a total of 32 inches or it could be one of these depending on what size that you're working on. You're going to notice that the front has an instruction that it's different and you will notice that there's a double asterisk right here in the third row. So it says work from double asterisk to double asterisk, right? And so basically the back and the front are identical up until these double asterisks right here. So if you're working on the front panel then the instruction will change as per this instruction. So it says if it's a front panel you want this is the back information and this is the front panel. Notice that there's a difference of inches. So 32 inches here in the back just like you see here and then there will be a total of 30 inches here in the front just like you see here. So it's actually not a hard thing to be able to follow. So you're going to notice in the diagram itself is that the back of the work as you see will go all the way across just like you see. So only the shaping of the neck area appears on the front panel. 
if that makes any sense to you. So the back is just a block going all the way to the top but in the front then we're gonna create the indentation. So what we have to do is that if you're working the back panel you're just gonna follow it up and get to your 32 inches and then completely fasten off and you're completely done and then you're gonna start the front panel and go only to 30 inches and then you're gonna continue along in the pattern of shaping the neck which is the to this information right here and this is both for the tunic and the top. So welcome back and now we have a sample completely done. This is the back panel as you see here. So the tunic and the top is very similar to each other. The only difference is that they're different height depending on um, which one you're doing. Also you'll have the different height sizes depending on the pattern that you're working with. I was doing the extra small so my dimensions are gonna be for this particular size. So if I was doing the extra small, let's just give an example of the tunic. Then the distance between the bottom base as you see here all the way to the top here in the back will be a total of, of 32 inches. Now if you're doing the top like I am right now this will be for the extra small all the way it will be a total of 23 inches. So you have to just, just to look at it here and this is actually quite a simple to follow. So the back panel has no indentation down so that it's just a matter of getting it ready and being able to do. So you can see the look of the sock yarn here did an amazing job and you can see it's wonderful. So I already have another panel Okay and this will be the front and when I lay it over the top you're going to notice that they don't quite match each other and that's because I'm not quite done. So the last final two rows here on the top just like you see up here will have the indentation in it. So we have to work on one side first and then we work on the other side second in order to create the indentation. So we just have to continue to crochet and fill in this fill in these sections here at the top when we go to do it. Both the top and the tunic are identical in this set of the instruction and then once we get that done then we can just start sewing things together. So we sew things uh, right from here going out. We sew then just underneath the arms just like you see here and then going all the way down to the sides just like you have here and of course you leave the bottom open so you can get into it. So let's uh, move along now and you're gonna do the front panel all the way to a certain uh, measurement and you saw that in the pattern itself uh, I already explained that and then you're gonna the final two rows that we're about to do is gonna be the conclusion to be able to do the top areas of the shoulders. So now we're ready to do the front panel and we're gonna be shaping the neck and this is the indentations that you see. We're gonna do one side first and then we're gonna come back and do the other side. So you're gonna notice that there is a right side and a left side. So we're gonna start with the left side first and all we're just gonna do is just continue on with the same uh, yarn that you had been working with before. So we haven't fastened off at this point and the final two rows will be one side and then the other final two rows will be the other. You can see that there's a set of instructions and you'll see that there is colors here so that means that there is a choice in order for us to follow. So you'll notice that it says chain three counts as a double crochet and then one double crochet in each of the next number and those are the sizes that you're working on and then it says yarn over the hook and we're gonna do some uh, things to at the end of this in order to create the, the chamfer look that you see here on the pattern. So let's move along and we're gonna continue on. So right where you are in the project you're just gonna keep your yarn on and we're now gonna move our way across. So in keeping with the pattern I know it's black I know it's hard to see but you really do need to see the instructions in order to get the counts anyway. So it's something that you should look for. So you're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three and it says one double crochet in each of the next number. So for mine is the extra small. So my case will be 33 double crochets in a row. So we start with the next one. So this is one, and two and you're going to go all the way to the size. So if you have, if you're working on a different size just look at that information here on the pattern and you'll see that. So I'll see at the end of that section but don't turn it around because we're not quite done at that point. So once you get your set count number, mine was a total of 33 that, uh, that was going across and then the next two stitches are together. So just yarn over okay and going into the next stitch pull through pull through two and hold and then go into the next one. So yarn over, go into the next stitch after that, pull through, pull through two and hold and now you have three loops on your hook and then all I want you to do then is to pull through all three and that was a two together stitch uh, just like you see. So now we're gonna turn and work okay and we're now gonna continue back on this side of this. So we're only doing one side at a time. So let's move along to row number two. So let's move along and we're going to chain up three. So one, two and three and you just come immediately into the next stitch that's available to you and then just double crochet yourself all the way back across. So this is row number two. 
So we have to repeat row number one and row number two um, uh, one more time and then repeat uh, the first row one more time after that. So it's actually a pretty easy thing. So there's a total of five rows in order to make this. So just double crochet yourself all the way back across the top. So once you get all the way across you're just gonna turn your work back and then you're just going to then chain up three Okay, so we're gonna repeat row number one once again. So here's the thing. You already know where you're going to stop because you can see that the final two stitches are here. So the final two stitches are going to become into one. So all you're just gonna do then in this row is that you're going to chain up three, one, two, three counts as a double crochet and you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across except for the final two stitches. You're gonna make those two together and I'll see you there in just a sec just to show you how to do that once again. So I'm coming near to the end of the row and I'm just looking for the two final stitches that are in the end and those will be the ones that I'm gonna put together. So it's not this one, it's the next two are gonna come together. So here we go. So the here's the next one. So put it together with the two uh, together double crochet and then do the final one, pull through and then pull through all three loops just like you see like that. So now let's turn and work and you're gonna go all the way back one more time Okay, but we're not quite done after that. So chain up three. So one, two, and three and just double crochet one into each going all the way back. So we just have to go back one more time across after we're done this row and then that's it for this side of the, the neck shaping and then we're gonna go to the other side of the neck in order to finish out the other side. So just uh, meet me back here at the end of this row and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back across and now I'm going to turn my work and then do my final row. So this will be row number five. You can see that it's uh, doing a pretty good job here. So what at row number five, the final two in the end will become two together just like they had been before. So chain up three. This is your final row on this side and then we're gonna move to the other side of the neck in order to do it. So just continue to double crochet. I've already showed you how to put two together. So do that with the final two stitches and fasten off and then get ready and then we'll do and review the other side of the neck in order to do this. So coming back across this is the final as we go all the way back, way back and remember that the final two stitches at the end will become one. So you're gonna put those together and then you're gonna fasten off at that point and you're done this side of the neck. So I'm just gonna do these last two together. Oops, I went into a space and not an actual stitch. Makes a difference in the look and then pull through all three and now fasten off and you can weave in your ends nicely for that and this side of the neck is done. So we're going to review the other side of this and uh, it's actually really quite straightforward now that you've done it once in order to do the other side. So here's what it looks like at this point. You can see it went off just like the photograph and what we're gonna do then is that we're gonna start midway through here and then go to this side. So the difference between a left and right is the difference of where you're starting. So if you start on the edge and go this way, you're going to have the yarn not looking like it's matching each other and you'll have a very obvious mark uh, in your project right on your shoulder where everybody's kind of gonna look at you and judge you I'm sure. So what happens, let them judge you for other reasons obviously but what you have to start here and then go this way. So the way that the pattern is written is that it's kind of opposite to what you just did over here. So instead of starting on the edge and working your way out, you're starting in the middle working your way back and you're still having five rows but you still have to pay attention to where the neck is and that's really quite simple. So if your counts are off at any particular point, I'm going to show you how to cheat the system because this is the best tip you'll probably ever get today. So if you remember in the beginning we chained up three and then I did 33 double crochets across as per my size that I'm working on. So that gives you a total of 34 stitches. So you can either skip the amount of stitches that it's recommending but what happens if you've got it wrong? that means that one shoulder is gonna be bigger than the other. So in order to keep the balance, I would suggest doing it another way. This is what I would do and the way that they've suggested in the pattern is completely legit but I know myself, I know I can make mistakes. So what I want to do is that I want to get my yarn ready and I wanna count a total of 34. So no matter what size that you worked on, so if it was the 37, 39, 43, 51 or 59, just add one more stitch and then you can count it across. So I'm gonna do 34. So I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So 34 is going to take me right into this particular stitch and I'm going to join it with a slip knot and pull through. Okay. And then I'm going to start from this particular point in the tutorial. So instead of counting it from this side and potentially being off by one or two or not even off it at all. Uh, this is the safe way to go so that you know that it's going to be directly in the center. So let's uh, move on to doing the right side and um, that's the way I would recommend to start. So on the right side as we we just did the join we're going to then chain up three. So one, two and three and then just move to the next stitch and you're going to double crochet yourself all the way back across as you do this. Okay and that will take you to the edge. So anytime you're heading back toward the neck like we had before we're going to do two together. So be because we're going towards the outside you don't need to worry about that stuff so much. It's only when you're moving in the other direction. So just do one double crochet in each stitch all the way to the outside edge. So as I come all the way back across I'm just doing one double crochet in each all the way and then I'm going to turn my work. So remember we're heading back toward the neckline and remember what we did before. So you're just going to chain up three. So one, two and three and then just one double crochet in each. So the final two stitches that you'll end up in this section will be two together like you had done, done before. So it's really quite an easy thing. You don't have to worry about counting so much and it's awesome. So remember that there was a total count of five rows. Okay in this section. So we've just done one and we have now are doing two. So what I want you to do is and this is pretty straightforward because you've already done the one side is that every time you row heads back toward the neck just put the two together and then just uh, go up the next row chain three and then one double crochet all the way across. So what I want you to do is that I want you to finish this uh, section off and then I'm going to review uh, doing the sewing. So this is really quite a straightforward uh, concept in order for you to be able to follow. So remember when heading back to the neck put the last two together with the two together double crochet and then you want to uh, go back out and uh, just uh, continue along in that fashion. So there's a total of five rows just do that and meet me back here and I'll begin the sewing process from that point. So at this point now both shoulders uh, side, neck seams are done and we're going to do a single crochet along here plus the outside of the other one that we have. So let's uh, begin to put this thing together and we're going to grab the back panel first. So we have to start off with the back panel in the back and then we just lay down the front on top and you'll notice that everything will match if you've kept your stitch counts proper and you're just going to match everything and you're going to sew along the tops here in order to keep it balanced and leave this open and then you're just going to match and then you're just going to sew using the same color uh, that matches each other for the sleeve. So leave this completely open here and then match the same color going all the way down to the base and we're going to do that. So I'm going to show you some quick uh, uh, stitching techniques in order to do that and then once you have that done you're going to uh, do it so it's outside right in order to do it. So right where we're looking at is kind of the inside and we're going to do all the sewing on this side and then flip it uh, uh, outside right in order for you to be able to have this to be done and then I'll just review on how to do the single crochet here at the top. So let's review on how to sew together. So what I want you to do is create a slip knot with the string that you want to use for sewing and just leave that here. And I want you to grab the other side of it. You don't need a big string because it's only a short distance that you're going to have to do on the top here and I want you to insert that into a darning needle. I want you to start on the outside of this. Okay so if you're doing the other side you'll start on the outside of that one and I want you to go into the base one underneath and just grab the first stitch and I want you to grab the first stitch on the front one right here and I want you to pull that through but don't pull it all the way through. I want you to stop right where that slip knot is coming up which is right now and insert the needle in and that will lock this string onto each other. Remember that we're looking at the inside of the garment at this point. So moving along on the next stitch at the base. So just going right into the stitch itself and then grab the next stitch on the other side and I want you to the straggler that is laying down over top I want you to just lay it down here so that it gets stuck underneath. We're doing what is called as a whip stitch. Okay so we're just gonna then continue along. So move to the next stitch available to you on the front and the back and once you get started with this it kind of matches each other anyway. So it's, it becomes very quick and easy to do that. So just going straight across and then grab the next stitch straight across. 
and so forth. So you're just burying in that tail at the end at the same time. You can bury it later if you prefer not to do it the way I'm showing you as well. Again creativity is your own personal choice on what works for you. So just keep moving along the stitches and as soon as you get to this area here where there's no stitches on the front that's where you stop and then you're going to then flip it over and when I say flip it over just flip it over and work your way on the outside then going in the other direction so that you end up back in the middle just like so. You're gonna do the same technique then of doing it in here of attaching this section here and then using the same color yarn go all the way down to the base in order to do that. So I want you to do that all now and I will see you back here in just a few moments. So now I'm back and I have all the seams sewn as you can see and I'm looking at the outside of the project. So the inside has the seam in the inside as you can see the whip stitching there. So now it's about putting it the final touches on. I'm actually really quite happy with this. So the back shoulder area looks different than the front and again you can use your own creativity. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to start off then and we're just gonna do one final. I figured it might be fun to use the base color for the neck. It's up to you. It's your creativity. You can do what you want and we're gonna start off with a slip knot on with your hook that you've been using and you're just gonna start off on the one side and you're just gonna place one single crochet. So just join it with a slip knot, a slip stitch sorry and slip stitch and then chain one and you're gonna do one uh, single crochet into each stitch going all the way around. So just continue to move around and you can see the stitches are all in there. The only place that you don't see the stitches are in the sides here in this section and you just have to just fake it or make it just uh, evenly space them as you go through the, the next seams there. But either way it's still pretty easy to work with. So just one single crochet in uh, all the way around and just evenly space it if you don't see any stitches generally. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. When you get all the way around all you're just gonna do then is just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that you had started with and then that's it. You're actually done your project. We're just going to take this yarn and just fasten off and then using your darning needle. So you know this kind of project does require you to use a darning needle. A lot of people get afraid of that kind of stuff but it really doesn't, you don't have to be afraid of it. Um, this is the best way to weave in your ends. It just go back and forth and you work a total of three times. So just one just stay underneath the stitches so you don't uh, see it and then go back in the other direction for two and finally back in the other direction for three. So this is the neckline so you wanna take your time um, with uh, getting these kind of things done and then you can safely just trim it right out of the project just like so. So this is the conclusion on to do this. I'm gonna take this project outside, take some photography and we'll see what it looks like on the mannequin. Mm -hmm.